What's up everybody, Liv here. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing well myself. Please go ahead and like and subscribe and share if you haven't already in good faith that I will continue bringing you great content. Oh, and I'm just another YouTube personality, so take what I say with a grain of salt and do your own research, okay? All right, so listen. It's been a while since I've sat at the table and done um, a firearms review. And I'm a little nervous, and I think I'm nervous because... Um, what I'm going to review today is a 1911, and I haven't reviewed a 1911 in two years. Uh, two years ago, I reviewed a um, Springfield 1911, the TRP, and I reviewed um, a Kimber um, 1911, I think it was compact, both chambered in 45 ACP. And I was just learning about 1911s. And so I asked CZ to send me over the 1911 specialist, and they did. And I know I have a lot of enthusiasts on this channel, and so I'm going to preface this video with saying I don't know it all. <laughs> and please don't creep me in the comment section because I'm really trying, and I feel like um, this firearm was so perfect for me that I may not do it the justice it deserves, but I'm going to try my best. So... If I misspeak or if I get something wrong or if I forget something, please help me out in the comment section. But be easy on me because I just feel super nervous. But um, I would like to thank CZ for sending this over and helping out with ammo costs. You guys have been really good to me and I truly appreciate it. Notice my little shirt they sent me. And on the back it has the Dan Wesson logo. But um, yeah. Okay. I'm also going to put, I'm going to like uh, separate it um, based on the features so that if you want to click through, you may do that. All right. I'm so nervous. I love this gun. Okay. Last little bit before we get into this. So some of the footage is me shooting a dual tree and it's about 55 feet away. However many yards that is, it's about 55 feet away, but the, <laughs> the plates are really small. So don't be picking on my shooting. The plates are really small. I haven't shot in a while. And, um, sometimes when I hit them, they actually did not flip. So I was actually hitting them, but they didn't flip over, which could be, they need to be a little oiled up or whatever. I don't know, you know, polish it or something. So it flips around more easily. Or I need to use a um, heavier caliber, like a 124 grain. So that's all I needed to say to preference this video. But again, CZ, thank you for sponsoring this video. And we're about to get into it. So we are talking about the Dan Wesson Specialist. You can also get this in 45 ACP and 10 millimeter. Okay, this is uh, 9 millimeter. So... The firearm is empty. I don't know why I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous, but I'm going to get to it because I know y'all like, oh, come on. So um, these are snap caps. Okay. So you guys can see. All right. Oh, woo. Okay. Look at that. Here we go. All right, so this is the Dan Wesson 1911 Specialist chambered in 9mm stainless. It has a barrel length of 5 inches. It comes with two 10-round capacity magazines with bumper pads. You'll see that it has G10 grips. It is single action for those who may not be familiar with 1911s. It has a tactical rear sight with one dot tritium and a fixed front sight with tritium and a right ring around it. Um, they are night sights. It has an inverted rib to cut down on glare. I did not shoot outside, but if you shoot outside, it will cut down on some glare. It has ambi safety controls, which I love because I am a lefty. It has an accessory rail where you can put your lights and lasers if that's what you choose. It also has a flare mag well, one piece by the way, and the finish is like a bead blast finish. It is worth $1,700 and we will talk about the price as well. Okay, I'm gonna start with the slide and then go down to the frame and I'm gonna see if I can get 
through this review. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the sites. Um, I like the one dot rear site and the rear tactical site is actually serrated and it draws my eyes in on the front side. So I really like looking down through the rear sights, um, through the front side and onto my target. Again, it has the rib cut to uh, cut down on glare, but it also guides my eyes right down to the front sight. And they're easy to pick up during the daylight, even though they're night sights. I didn't have a problem with that at all. Okay. Um, the slide felt really good. The serrations felt really good. It has front and rear serrations. And some of you may not like a front serration on the 1911. It gives it a more modern look. And I did appreciate that. Okay, um, they were easy to actuate and it didn't take away the classic look of the bead blast finish. Now, the barrel is a match barrel. So, I did like that. It was very accurate. Okay, again, I had a little trouble uh, with my accuracy because I haven't shot small plates in a very long time, but it was very accurate and I truly enjoyed uh, shooting it. I didn't have any issues out of it at all. I actually shot about 300 to 350 rounds and loved every moment of it. We're gonna get into the hammer. The hammer is skeletonized and it just makes it look a little more classic and obviously it um, cuts down on the weight. The safety controls are ambi and they're not too big and they're not too small. For me, they were absolutely perfect. They did not get in the way. And when I um, was shooting, I was riding that safety down because I've learned two years ago when I was shooting in 1911, my palm on my offhand was actuating the safety and um like I was trying to shoot it and it wouldn't shoot and someone told me in the comments hey use your thumb to ride the safety and you'll be fine so I was able to do that the uh grip safety did not get in the way I didn't feel it at all it wasn't an issue it felt very comfortable and that brings me into the ergonomics of this uh pistol Listen, 1911s basically have the best ergonomics. It, that's just what it is. They have the best ergonomics. Um, they point naturally and they seem to stay right on target. Now, I can't talk for all 1911s, but I can speak for this one and a couple of others that I've shot in the past. They stay right on target. They're very flat shooting and um, they just it's just natural to the average person. Okay, the grips. The grips are G10. Listen, they have a good bite. Now, I told you guys in the past I have very sensitive hands, and so there are times where I feel like some grips are a little too hard or aggressive for me, and one of those uh, handguns is the P10C. Um, I thought those grips were really aggressive, and so I had to put some... Um, some aftermarket grips on there to soften it up a bit. But these are, and when you look at them, they're pretty aggressive looking as well, but they feel good. I mean, it had a good bite. The checkering in the front and the back worked really well in keeping that firearm flat. It wasn't slipping out of my hands. I mean, I didn't have any issues with the grip. And normally I have lotion on my hands from taking a shower, lotioning up, and then going to the range. So my hands are always like a little slippery. Man, listen, these grips locked right on in and I didn't have any issues at all. I didn't have to, you know, wash them and wipe them down at all. They just locked in. So I do appreciate the extra checkering on the front and the rear straps. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the trigger. You guys know I have a snap cap in here. And so we are going to do a couple of trigger pulls and uh, see what you guys think, okay? So a couple of things. There is no wiggle room. So as I was doing my research, I noticed that some 1911s, maybe on the lower end, this is about mid to high tier, but on the lower end, there's a lot of wiggle room in the middle. With this 1911, I didn't find any wiggle. 
okay? And if it was, it was very minimum. I'm trying to see now. I don't remember any wiggle room, all right? The tolerances are very tight. So um, when you're holding it, you can feel that it's very well made. And when you pull the trigger, it feels um, as if it was custom made. Now, I don't really want to get into all the granular details when it comes to 1911s because I know some are custom, some um, come off the assembly line. Um, I'm not really sure about this one, but it feels solid. It feels like there was some time and attention and quality control when making this trigger. So enough of me talking. I'm going to try to remember to keep my grip safety compressed because I'm not used to shooting 1911s on camera. All right, so here we go. So very little take up. I'm trying to get a little closer. Very little take up, as you can see right there. And then wall break. All right, sorry about that noise. Those are snap caps falling. Here we go with the reset. Back at the wall. One more time. Reset. Back at the wall. All right, so um, it feels good. I didn't test how many pounds it is, but I want to say it's about a three and a half pound trigger pull. I could be a little off by that. And if I am, uh, please correct me, but that's what it feels like. I didn't test it, but that's what it feels like from previous experiences with triggers. Um, what else? Again, it has the accessory well, and there is an undercut here. So if you look very carefully against my black shirt, you'll see the undercut is very well designed and it's smooth. So they, you know, they made sure they smoothed it off um, and it allows you to get a good grip so you can really get your fingers up underneath and um, really uh, get a good purchase on the firearm. Now the magazine, is a 10 round mag okay let me put these snap caps back in the ones i can find on the table anyway because i think two dropped so they come with two 10 round mags with the bump plates and i really do appreciate the bump plate because what it does is it um it just gives it a nice aesthetic clean look Okay, and if you have bigger hands than I do, some people do, it um, allows you to get a good purchase by um, having that lip down there to help you um, get a good grip. Now, the magwell is flared, and so I was able to guide the magazines in. I still think that if I had one negative thing to say, I still think that even though the magazine well is flared, if you notice the cutout, the cutout is it's pretty precise to the width of the magazine. So even though it's flared and it helps you guide it in, if you're really not paying attention, it could get stuck, okay? I think if it was maybe a little slimmer on the width, then um, it would guide in a little better but I say that now because I'm playing around with it but I will be honest at the range I didn't notice it much but I also wasn't doing like speed reloads either if I'm being honest all right so they slide out you know as you can see they punch right out now um, I'm lefty so for me um, I noticed that the mag button is extended just a tad and it has texture on it. You guys can see that. Listen, I did not have any issues with that. Now, normally I do have issues with an extended mag button because my, my grip is so high and tight. And if you notice, look at my middle finger. When I'm gripping, I have my middle finger and then I'm here with it. And so the pressure of my index finger on my middle finger and my middle finger pressing the mag button, um, it tends to 
Well, the magazine tends to fall out while I'm shooting. I've noticed that on several different guns. So that's why I like to switch the mag button around. But this was just perfectly designed for a left-handed person because it's not too big, it's not too small, it's placed perfectly, and it has texture on it so that um, it's easy to actuate if you want to actuate it with your index finger. Um, it's just perfect for me. I Listen, some people do middle. I can't do middle. I like to keep my grip and do index, but preferably I like to have it on the other side. But I am not going to change anything on this because I'm not fooling around with it, okay? I'm not fooling around with it. Another thing, the takedown uh, pin is a little... Uh, it it's protrudes enough to obviously actuate it, but it's not... Um, it's not a hindrance when you are uh, firing. And if you guys are right-handed, then it's not a hindrance at all, okay? But um, it is there for the takedown. And then over here, you also have the um, takedown lever right there that is recessed, as you can see, into the frame. And then um, it protrudes right here so you can actuate it. As a lefty, it did not bother me at all. Um, for you righties, I'm not sure if it will bother you. Um, I've been practicing shooting right handed, so let me see. Mm. I don't think it will, but I don't know. Y'all be the judge of that. Um, what else? I feel like I'm missing something. The beaver tail. The beaver tail is extended so that, again, you can get a high purchase on that firearm and um, be able to punch out at your target. And it just locks in. Um, I've shot other 1911s where the beaver tail, for whatever reason, is a combination between the beaver tail and the safety lever. It... <sighs> It kind of rubs against my thumb knuckle right here, if that makes sense. And um, maybe I'm gripping it too tight, but it actually, it's annoying. It's actually a hindrance, but for whatever reason, not on this gun. Listen, this gun was super reliable. The ergonomics were perfect. I mean, it's the <laughs> perfect point and shoot. A firearm again I don't have a lot of rounds but this is 2021 so I have about 300 to 350 rounds through it and um, that is a lot for this firearm I shot this with various ammo and again not one malfunction not one hiccup but if I'm being honest with this match barrel and the polished feed ramp and just the overall tolerances and the um, well-crafted uh, ingenuity that this 1911 is equipped with. I'm not sure that moving forward, I would just shoot any ammo through here. I will prefer 124 grain and more of a cleaner um, option of ammo because although it ate anything, it just feels like it needs better nutrition. You know what I'm saying? Like, it can't be eating all that junk food. It needs some vegetables, some grains, some protein. You know what I'm saying? Not junk food. So, um, I think moving forward, I will be more selective with the ammo that I use in this firearm. Um, lastly, and I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but um, from doing my research, hopefully you guys are still watching, but from doing my research, Apparently, the specialist was derived from police departments going to Dan Wesson and asking them for a more reliable and durable 1911s to replace their current 1911s. And so Dan Wesson came up with this, the specialist, and it was really a hit so much so that um, they figured that it was great for home defense as well. And so they started offering it to the public for sale. So... Look at me. I got a little research, you know what I'm saying? I do a little something, something. And before I end this, of course, we got to talk about the $1,700 price tag. Now, this is not for everyone, okay? So I'm going to be honest about that. Um, if you can afford it, and there are plenty of people on my channel who knows the value of 1911s and understand uh, what Dan Wesson has to offer. And so for them, that may mean that the $1,700 price tag is worth it. Again, 
$1,700 MSRP, but it will be a little bit cheaper in stores. You will find the value in this. If you are really not into 1911s and you are a casual shooter, you may not find, um, you may not find value in this. And that is okay because everything is not for everybody. But I do want to be honest about it that it is going to cost you a little penny. And so um, you have to make sure that it is worth it for you. So yeah, now that we got that out of the way, you guys let me know how you feel about this. Let me know your thoughts on this. I truly enjoyed it. I had a great time uh, shooting this. I love the finish on this. I love the ergonomics. The sights were amazing. I love that it has AMB safety controls being a left-handed person. The trigger was immaculate. The grips are very comfortable. Magazines didn't give me any hiccups at all. And um, the checker helped me get a good purchase on the firearm. Listen, this 1911 with this match grade barrel might be a hit for some people. Um, but uh, even if it's not a hit for you, I hope you enjoyed the video. I loved it and um, it's definitely one of my favorites. So thank you CZ for sending this over and um, you guys be well. Thank you for watching. I hope you're treating one another with kindness and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Peace.